loaded. from the docks, not the docks, the riverside to in here basically. I need to be in here. So I've not introduced myself to anybody. Um, I just came here and straight up and saved. William Bishop's blood is much more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. But this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. The Saga flower is dying. It needs water. Them, but if you do go on past videos to keep up with the episodes, you can pause and read it yourself. So. I cannot I enter. enter. No. I cannot enter. So cool. It's locked. It's locked. You can go running around stealing everything and no one batters an eyelid. Rest in bed until the next night. I don't want to do that. Let's go uh, talk to people then. It's locked. There's never been a point where I could get into that room. So I'll follow the um, storyline momentarily. I've just lost everyone. Good evening, Good evening, Doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. To a life in London. How would you describe the situation with Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are Should running out of everything. Where's your PPE? Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? The Spanish flu lasted for four successive You must months. get a hold of yourself, nurse. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. No one has any idea when this epidemic will be over. Anyone, anyone want to place bets on whether COVID will you last you five ways? Or long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. <laughs> and no matter how qualified you are, Water. don't tell me you'll change that. The population was devastated through the Spanish flu. You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve, Nurse Hawkins. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away from a miracle. Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. 
Milton the ambulance driver is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Well, you would know. Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Why does Milton dislike doctors? Well, I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned. Milton is not the chatty type. I'm sure I can make him chat. How long Hi. have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve, Nurse Hawkins. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away from a miracle. Oh, I was hoping we Sorry, a Doctor. Answer. I... Personal questions. Never mind. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. You can leave. <sighs> Spanish flu wiped out 500 million people during its long-standing reign. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Ackroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swans's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Well, aren't you a bucket full of sunshine? If you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not... There is no need for such animosity between us. Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? That is one point we could agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital, instead of a burden. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money, fame, or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Ackroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. This is ridiculous. My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see? That is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Enlightening as always. 
What can I do for you, Doctor? Let's find out more about you. What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. It's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough, and better than me. The administrator has better things to do than mix with us. Apologies, I've only just met him the once. This is sudden. I've only just returned to England. Dr. Swansea is a brilliant surgeon and the most compassionate physician. And Mr. Hampton, the patient we brought in. How does he fare? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. The poor thing was in quite a state of shock. If you could point me in the direction of my room again, nurse. Second floor of the hospital, left after the stairs. It's the last vacant office at the end of the corridor. Thank you, Miss Green. Yeah, spoke to you, spoke to you. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here, then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. How painful oh, is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'm sure you realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. Well, Mr. Goswick, it's so painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'll let you get some rest. Doctor. Good evening, madam. Oh, I can don't I help want to you? talk. It's my son. Sooner than leave. Doctor. Doctor! I'm Dr. Doctor. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Gosman? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. Fine. Are you really that rich? How's your day? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes, thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Gosling? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Hey, Holly. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son, despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. She judged you, or I, I share your stupor? I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. Where'd you go? But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. Goodbye, Mrs. Gosling. Alright, you daft old bent. Leave it 
done, done, done. Let's talk to you. Good evening, Good evening. sir. I'm Dr. I'm Reed. Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Are you satisfied with your treatment? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable, and your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Tell me about yourself. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed, <laughs> so I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter, and a good one too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. I completely ignored what he said. <laughs> Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. Well, the hospital. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Could you at least face me while saying that instead of talking to What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's believe just, just, just a question of jealousy? Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. Um, it's nice to know I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental Hi. and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me. But I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. Well, I won't be working with you, but... It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude. 
I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. They're not smiling now. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research. Yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by. Local investigations. There you go. Fair enough. Uh, citizen investigations are displayed here, categorized by districts. You can start a new citizen quest by tracking it with square and then access to your map. Blah blah blah. blah. Cool. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? want? To save him? Or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from Because he is a proud father, ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that it's I'll be honest for about an hour-ish. I agree. Ish. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior. So a man who did not even take time anywhere. to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings <laughs> with desires, <laughs> hopes and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, I bones and so flesh. <laughs> Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the public hospital. Who are you? Your name has no meaning to me. Lurking in the background. Nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon. What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency. Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. <coughs> and why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like? To be a vampire. Oh. I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh that? cracks and fades. I sense yeah. the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. Do you know? I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Hope? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying. Dead, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it, it is I who am delusional. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howard? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. 
I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? Never do. I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the Mork. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me. For I am a vampire. I see. Say it Don't louder. Worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. No one of that. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm yes. curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal It's locked, all right. Good evening, Mr. Hampton. Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, Sora, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion made me say awful things to you, I'm afraid. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. Have you made friends since you arrived? A Not really. But I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. I knew her when she lived by the docks. That poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke. Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. Hi. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help but notice the cross around your neck. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks. And I try to guide the lost and hesitant on the right path to our Lord. Why didn't you use your cross against William Bishop? To repel him somehow? That's a very strange question, Doctor. A cross is no magical token, if that's what you were trying to say. Not mine, anyway. Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? Just a, a deacon, maybe? Life. Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith, willing to preach the good word. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel... empty. You're in good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest, and then I can go back to the people who need me. <laughs> what is the general situation in the East End docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tension. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I've had this nickname for so long, you know, the sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint, not even criminals. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who leads the show, with mate. the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. How did you end up in William? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place, and he refused to let me go. Well, you, you dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. 
His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here. This Miss Hawcroft. Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no be. advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. Oh no. The authorities aren't Goodbye, doing Ms. anything Hammond. to prevent a we'll pandemic. We'll talk again later. Wonder where they could have got that idea. Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better yeah, news to join these very terrible slow times. Episode. Do we know each other? Oh, that was a good idea. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett, yes, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. Thank you. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. It's not exactly the best situation in London either. I can't have expected this hospital to be prepared for what was to come. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Tell me more about cherished people. Like the nut dying. That's nurse positive. Branigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine so practitioner. Cheery. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must have... Ah, yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. What can you tell no, me about no, this? I don't want to do that. I have to write stuff. Goodbye, Dom. Goodbye. Scour voices in the garden. I should investigate. If they were to find somebody.
Up here. Where the frick did you come from? I've lost where I'm supposed to be. I was introducing myself and then I got distracted. finish all the stuff that you left out so you have to have it all finished and all collected before you go on to the ending of the game. Good evening, please. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, the new surgeon this here. Dr. Swansea has already told us about you, sir. I'm Nurse Gwyneth Branagan. Welcome to the Pembroke Hospital. Did he really? It's a good thing I wasn't He's hoping to keep a low profile. All members of staff well, have like already read about your here. new blood transfusion technique. Dr. Swansea made sure of that. I see. Well, Hi, I'm not surprised. Please feel free I suppose to say I'll hi. just have to deal with this unexpected notoriety. You must know, blood transfusions are Dr. Swansea's primary subject of research. He is convinced yeah, it is the future. Buy it. Do episodes. How are things here? Not good, to say the least. We're struggling against an invisible oh, enemy, more lethal than any bullet can right. gun. It's hard. An invisible enemy. Quite a poetic Five term people. for disease. Hello, Especially everybody. Sorry, Doctor. These last few weeks have been exhausting. We could all do with a good night's sleep. Do you think this hospital can survive the epidemic? We are all volunteers here, and we're trying to hold fast, but how do we beat an invisible killer? Some nurses are already resigned. What I'm not familiar with the staff like. yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals. Well, back down to Most four. they didn't like me. Dr. Swansea <laughs> has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them. Is there a problem I should know about that? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Is there anyone that stands out? Well, I have never met someone as dedicated as Dr. Tibbets. He should be a standard for us all here. If only he were younger. Oh, 
Why should his age be a problem? I guess it's fair to say he's always pushing himself to the limits. He just doesn't know when to stop and get some rest. Nurse Brannigan, if you do know something, please tell me. Anything you say will be held in confidence. No. I may disagree with some conduct, but in the end, everybody is doing their best. Personal questions. Why does Dr. Tippett's claim you're the main reason he keeps working, despite his fatigue? If it was morning. I probably would have left the Pembroke years ago. Dr. Tippetts does not think of you as just a nurse anymore, does he? <laughs> You're suggesting he's not taking my gender into consideration when it comes to medical practice and knowledge. I really hope he doesn't. Goodbye, nurse. Right. Call me if Bye -bye. you need assistance. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Dr. Reed. Dr. Reed. I'm Milton Hooks, Hooks, the ambulance <laughs> driver for this shit hole of ours. That's quite a blunt introduction, Mr. Hooks. You can call me Milton. I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot during the war, and have carried one ever since. Old habits die. No up. need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. No one wants to talk. Uh, your life in London. I'm not giving back your, back, your wallet just How yet. is the situation around here? You want to hear the situation is all right? It's fucking awful. We lack everything. And it's getting worse every day. So what do you do exactly in this hospital? Apart from smuggling guns. Stop I've been singing. an driver since too long, I guess. I'll bring sick people here night and day. It's a dirty job, but I get it done most of the time. Donkey. Since you're on the front line, how is the sanitary situation in this facility? Oh, it's a complete disaster. It's even getting dangerous to enter some streets or buildings. Yeah, there's two people jumping on and off. It sounds that. like things have been a bit rough recently. Maybe What's you happened? Don't like Yesterday me. I got attacked by the patient I was bringing in. I escaped from the hospital's garden, but I lost my wallet when I was running. You left an infected patient outside the hospital. That's incredibly dangerous. Go there yourself well, if you, you want. Killed but be the careful, infected doctor. Patient I'd rather not bring your dead body back. No, I think that goes against the doctor's code of protecting people. Oh crap, there's a sick person. Machete it to death. You know, I never get post. Are you really smuggling weapons through the hospital? Uh, why not? I've already been attacked by patients, you know. And by gang members willing to steal my money. But you're not defending yourself. Quite happy. You're selling you guns to civilians. People. You keep people alive your own way, don't you? I'd rather peek at an average view count of three people and then become affiliate. Why do you have such a mediocre <laughs> reputation among your colleagues, Milton? Fuck them. Nobody knows the horrors I've seen since working here. This city was sick long before the epidemic got to reach. I know it's a I don't call it time, anything. But correct me if I'm wrong. Is this not the job you are paid to do? I've seen babies left to die while their brothers were properly fed. Oh, okay. Underage girls and boys sold to all manner of perverts. Oh, like the doctors that like no doctors. Yeah, exactly. We lack words. So excuse me if I don't look the GPs that got I know a person. Very much. Oh, we know a charity Wait, that can help. <laughs> this guy is ruthless, bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, that's Milton. I have these some days. good news. What? The epidemic's over? I retrieved your wallet with all the money and a certain picture. Well, yeah, Pippa Hawkins is my girl. So what? Is it the difference of skin colour that bothers you? Not at all. Not Good. Please, take this money anyway. To remind you to keep <laughs> your mouth shut. 
Not everybody is as broad-minded as you, Dr. Reed. I'm very broad. What's going on between you and those Hawkins? Pippa's tired. Tired of all this oh, shit. Yeah. Tired of all those corpses so piling mean. up on. His last name's Hawks. She's depressed as I am. Wow. That's During the war, well, three I people witnessed a few girls at the parade. Like come oh, together in that. different <laughs> circumstances. <laughs> It can be very side. damaging, on maybe you're right. But we support each other, <laughs> and that's all that matters. You do really mm. meant to have intimate relationships with one another. Come on, Dr. Reed. This you know, is not the same cup of tea incident as last night. This running. is a separate cup of tea incident. Mm. Mm. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Mm. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. And then there's just the one gun. Melton shotgun. There is a thing. And I never spent the money. There's like a... It's an achievement. Pardon? It's like a competition between together. Win a box of pasta. <laughs> You're not giving away my box of pasta! <laughs> We're trying to get rid of my pasta. having my pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what am I, am I introducing myself to everybody? Let's see if we can talk to this guy. He's like, not dead. He's dying. Glitching, glitching, gl Is it glitching? It's fine here. Wait, hang on. God damn emotes. Oh, they've come up on my... What is that? Is that a guy with a moustache? <laughs> it came up on my phone, Holly. It just didn't come up on the screen. I keep telling him, because it doesn't work on the PlayStation. It sometimes does, though. <laughs> it's he's locked. Smiling, but he's doing the Pacific um, emojis for Twitch. Um. And they don't work for PlayStation. I think when you're running at full speed, you should be able to just boot the door open. Everybody's dead. Game over. If I'm to stay here until my research is complete, I'd better learn to hide my true nature from the mortals. Nah, fuck it. What about my thirst for blood? Rats. Do a Louis. Ah. Uh, answer the 
I'm so sorry. I know Dr. Swansea wanted you to rest, but we have somewhat of a crisis. A crisis? Uh, thank you. Our supply of antiseptics is nearly depleted. I was hoping there was another box up here, but... My room is off limits. What type of hospital are you running? No antiseptics. You have been away too long, Doctor. With the war and now this epidemic, supplies have been running scarce. I don't know who that more guy is. I may have a solution. In France during the war, drug shortage was a daily problem. We had to use our wits to overcome the shortages. However, do you don't you dare? See, it's weird. Certain household <laughs> chemical products can be used in a pinch Mugs instead. Don't move. Now, where's the hospital storeroom? Yeah, called Moodle. The storeroom? The Moodle. Fight chance. Because the this is the Pembroke. Flying cows. The space is luxury we don't have. I know, but he said Moodle. Everything used to be stored in the old morgue. I know what a Moodle is. Perhaps I should look there first. Where is this morgue? It's the large building behind the hospital. You need to go in the back door because it's been sealed off for sanitary reasons. Take this key. It opens a small back entrance at the end of a narrow street. Hey, oh, she's the abandoned door back behind the hospital. A small door at the end of a narrow street. On my way then. Thank you, nurse. Efficient medical aid is a blow struck at the well, that, of the flu epidemic. Volunteers it makes the difference. Yeah, that makes sense. Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. 
Never a good move. What's wrong with him? Everything's wrong with him. Yeah. Oh, we need to bring these flyers back. <laughs> Post them all over the show. Careless spitting, sneezing, coughing, spread influenza. Spread that by droplets sprayed from the nose and throat. Do not cough in public. Did you hear? Do not cough in public. <laughs> it looks like Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Don't it? Frequently complicated with pneumonia to prevent any case of Spanish flu, stay at home. I think this game's onto something. Where's the freaking pharmacy? Oh, we're not looking for the pharmacy anymore. Hi, Strickland! Good evening, Dr. Strip. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Uh, I was vandalized, <laughs> and the owner is missing. All I found no, no was I was afraid of such bad news. People are so desperate they're ready to burgle a shop for drugs. That's quite a list you ordered. I don't think people Opium, have to be desperate. Sodium hydrochloride. Oh no, I'm going to We're just headaches who try to cure. It's dreadful influenza, of course. I already ran some tests on hopeless cases. Without success, I must admit. Do you realize you could create a lethal poison without the correct dosage? Then there are the legal ramifications. Is this not That's true of any medical you. substance, Dr. Reed? However, if you would agree to improve it, I'd be glad to accept your help. As long as you promise to be scrupulous with your experiments, I may try to gather these substances and even help improve them on the mixture. That's all I'm asking for, Dr. Reed. That's all I'm asking. Have I got anything about I want to know about these secret tests you run, and if they can save people from this epidemic. Speak to me now, Thoreau. I know I may sound presumptuous, but I'm just following your steps, Dr. Reed. I'm casting away the shadows of ignorance by daring to face them. Self-confidence is essential in our life. <laughs> Or is it just me? But only if tempered with the correct amount of cynicism. But you never doubt yourself, Dr. Reed. I've read all your articles and books. You performed the most daring research during the war. You have my support, Dr. Strick. I will... I know exactly what it feels like to battle an unknown disease. Medicine, and then I will be signing off Thank you, Dr. Reed. You don't know what that means to me. Thank you, everyone, to who came and watched or popped in. Next time, please feel free to say hi. 
I can't let Strickland put his patients at risk with opium. Perhaps Thank you so much an adjusted for watching. formula will deliver more. And, and I will see you again tomorrow at 11 for episode 3. Losing track of episodes I've only done two. So we will sort out his weird ass. Strickland's project could be dangerous. I have a mind to report him to Dr. Ackroyd. Right. And I will be saving. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll find out who I give it to later. Following night, I'm dead.